Hi guys, today I'm going to be installing the link pipe on my 2022 Yamaha MT10. This link pipe will delete the catalytic converter and I'm going to be reusing the stock muffler, so stay tuned. I acquired this link pipe from a friend of mine who got it from eBay and um, this is actually for Gen 1 MT10 but I've also confirmed with the seller from eBay so that it will fit on Gen 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fit everything and once it's all dry fitted and you know so seems right I'm going to then tighten up all the clamps and then possibly put the exhaust um, sealant as well. This thing pipe also comes with two O2 sensors bobbins on both sides so that it won't throw any error code on the screen and um, now I'm going to disassemble the catalytic converter and the stock muffler next. So first thing you need to remove the heat shield and um, there are three four millimeter hex head bolts and place it somewhere safe because I don't think you'll be reusing this again. Next up, we're going to undo the muffler and to do that you need to loosen up this clamp and for that you'll require a 5mm hex head and just loosen it up. And then you will need a six millimeter to undo this bracket. So the muffler can be taken out. Just hold on to the muffler so it doesn't drop and damage it. Once the clamp is loosened, you can just pull it off and then go and place it somewhere safe. Next up, we'll need to remove the flapper um, cable from the catalytic converter and to do that you need to loosen up these two nuts so the cable will come loose. On a Gen 1, I believe the catalytic converter flapper um, valve is actually located at the top. But on a Gen 2, 2022 MT10, it's actually located on the side. Once one is loosened, you can just pull the cable off like so.
Just remember in the, the black one is the top and the silver one is at the bottom if you were to ever to reinstall it. I'm not going to remove this cable straight away because I'm going to dry fit the um, link pipe to make sure it fits properly before I remove the cable in case I need to put the catalytic converter back on. So you need to undo this clamp that a catalytic converter is connected to the headers and to do that you need a 10 millimeter socket. I'm pretty tight. Just loosen it enough so you can slide forward. Then you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench to undo this O2 sensor. Once it's loosened, we could just get it out of the way. Pick it out a little bit. There's a little washer, crush washer. Make sure you don't lose it. I'm just gonna place it in here. And then next, you'll need a five millimeter, so a six millimeter hex key to undo these two brackets that catalytic converter has been held in. Now he can keep these bolts because you're not going to need them again. Now I'm on the left side of the bike. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll undo this clamp, the O2 sensor, and the bolt that's holding up the catalytic converter.
once it's loosened, the clamp is just slightly forwarded. Now you'll need the 17 millimeter wrench again to undo this O2 sensor. Once it's loosened, we're going to undo these clips. Alright, you look at how to undo this. So we can actually free the O2 sensor without twisting the cable too much. On the right side of the bike, the O2 sensor cable is actually tucked, the plug is tucked away all the way um, inside the, behind the um, frame. So it'll be kind of hard, but on the right side, you can actually undo it. The clip and then put it back on and then put the clip back on the connector. out like so and the O2 sensor plug is right here which is also tugged away okay we'll just leave it as this one now So next, put the stand down, and you're going to need a 6mm hex, and this is the last, last bolt that's holding up the, to the converter. Next, we're going to try and wiggle this catalytic converter out to the back. And uh, I have a little trusty rubber mallet. If it doesn't come up, we're going to just bang it against here. So I'm going to wiggle it. Left and right, up and down. And then this, coming out. Like this, coming out. Making sure you don't scratch anything. Or have anything underneath. This it is quite heavy. Very heavy. At least, I say, eight, nine kilo, maybe 10 kilograms. And also, remove the clamps from the stock OEM catalytic converter clamps because we don't need them anymore. We're going to be using the one that comes with a pipe. Next, um, I was going to use the clamp that came with the link pipe, but the bolt is way too long and I can't be, I can't be bothered cutting it. So I'm going to reuse the stock um, clamps that came with the bike. So there's a little um, stopper so you don't go too far in. So the head of the clamp, so this is obviously the right side. I'm going to place it back on. For both sides. Like 
and then I've done a bit of a clean around the header pipes and also inside here I've made it I cleaned it up a little bit and then we're going now to try to dry fit it. Good. Little two sensor reaches. Good. No clamps. Can go on. Good as well. Yep. I'm not going to tighten up the clamps yet. I'm just going to dry fit it for now. And then I'm going to get a stock muffler and put it on to see if it all comes together. Next, this is the stock muffler. I'm going to try and fit it back on, dry fit it without tightening up any bolts. And what I've done is I've also put these two um, ASOS flapper cables, tied it up because I'm not sure if this ASOS link pipe will fit or not. So let's try it now. Perfect fit. Almost perfect. Just gonna temporarily do up this bolt so it doesn't fall down. I'm just going to loosely tighten it up for now. And fit this muffler in. And then you have your gasket and the bearing. Hold it in place. much neater. Alright, I'm going to undo all of it and I'm going to get that exhaust paste.
So I bought this exhaust system sealant. So this can be used to join up at the um, link pipe and the header to get a real tight seal. And I'm gonna undo it and then apply that paste and then put it back on. So before we move on with um, tightening up the exhaust and finalizing everything, we've got to remove the two um, cables for the exhaust flapper and the catalytic converter. So remove the seat. And then this is the servo motor that controls the flapper valve. There's a little rubber. Just, just need to undo it. And it comes loose. It is essential that the bike is turned off, otherwise it'll throw the error code and do not unplug this. They made it so that you can't unplug it as well with a tape around it. So what you do is just pull it out a little bit and undo these two screws, two Phillip head screws. Because we've loosened the cable at the bottom, this cable should now be loose and you just, just undo it like so. And you might have to turn it a little bit and then undo the left side. And then it just comes off. And then reinstall the cover. I think you can buy the servo uh, eliminator from eBay and things like that, but I'm not going to bother with it because I don't mind having it under my seat. And then one day I'm going to be flushing the ECU and then have it completely removed when I flush the ECU. And then we can actually un uninstall it. But until then, I'm going to leave it under my seat. It only weighs about 200 grams, 300 grams. That's about it. So it's quite light. You're not doing much weight saving. Now just reinstall it. Put the rubber band back on. And then we're going to go back to the right side of the bike and then I'm going to pull this out. Next, I'm going to just undo this and pull them out. And before I do that, I'm going to take this part back out.
Okay, you pull it out one at a time. So it is quite tight. It looks like it's held in by a bracket. So I'm gonna pause this video and then find out what's holding the back. Might even have to undo this bolt at the back here. Take out that um, flapper cable. There's a clip here that's holding it in. You just undo this, both of them. Just slide it out. I'm not gonna bother removing that bracket. Okay, once they're loose, we should be able to pull one, one by one. It was a bit of a tight space, so you have to completely take it out of the bracket, and then you should be able to pull it off one table at a time. Then, I already started pulling it out. Cable wrapped, make sure you can see it. The cable wrapped just behind the rear rear brake master cylinder. So take that out first, and then that should be loose enough for the second cable. I tend to reinstall it if you were to, you might have to remove the battery. Okay, so you have this little bobbin here. It's going to be a bit of a tight space again, so just pull that one cable up and then so you can actually take out the second, first cable first. Alright, that's done. Nice. And then do the second bit. You're not going to need these cables again, so you can just store it with the rest of the other stuff Next, I'm going to apply the exhaust sealant around the header and also Inside of the inside of these um, link pipe. So I said here on the instruction. Sealant, apply sealant liberally around the surface area to be sealed or all joints, cracks or gap to be filled. Seat or fit, pipe or muffler together. Okay. It's like a clay. It's going to be a bit messy, but I'm going to wipe it all down afterwards.
I'll also do about two inches because the pipe this is about two inches and I apply it liberally apply it a lot Smooth it out. Get more here. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side. And the Both sides are applied. Now I'm gonna do the inside of the link pipe. So giving it a maximum seal. Uh, Again, I'm only going to be applying about two inches in and wipe off the excess. Okay, so I'm going to fit the link pipe on and then tighten the clamps, and I'll do the O2 sensors last. What do is just as before dry fitting, fit it on like so, making sure the clamps are inside so you don't forget and then you don't have to take it back out. Now that's on tight, I'm going to get a rag to wipe off the excess of the sealant. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off the excess. This is going to come off. Oh well. Okay, double check both sides are in properly. They do dry pretty quick. Then I need to use water. Oh, it'll come off when I wash the bike. to make sure both sides are in properly.
right? Clean up the excess. I'm gonna wash this, wet it. Yeah, if you wet it, it comes up easier. It's essentially clay, I reckon. So some type of clay. So now position a clamp like forty five degree. Nah, this clamp's not gonna work. I might have to go with the original clamp that came with the exhaust. So what I've done is I've cut off the bolt that was really protruding, and by doing so, I can now place this bolt upwards perfectly. It'll be hidden away. It's great. This time for the next side. Okay, now continue. I'm gonna fit the link pipe back on. Okay, now I've got the link pipe back on. So I positioned the clamp upwards, so it's not gonna be seen, the bolt, and just slightly tilt it. And then I position it so it's at the end of this flare cut out. and then tighten it up.
don't over tighten it yet because we've got to put the muffler back on so I just tighten it until um, finger tight kind of thing and then do the other side same thing position the clamp so it's just at the edge of the flare Put the muffler back on and to do that you need to get this flange see how one side is wider than the other so the wider side face it to the back just put it in temporarily And then you have this um, gasket. It doesn't matter which way it goes, it looks the same on both sides. And um, you don't need the muffler uh, is all sealant for this because the um, the clamp and the gasket should seal it. And then tighten it up. Just once the flange goes on, it should sit right at the edge here. Okay. So to do that, you're gonna need a six millimeter hex. And just don't tighten everything completely yet, just so that it will stay in place. Okay. Just tight enough. This the next part is to put this clamp back on. So you gotta sort of force the um, muffler down a little bit. I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit. Okay. Better force the muffler down a little bit so it sort of goes in an inch or so. I'm going to take these gloves off. It's hard to work with them. Okay, so first the gasket and the flange, and it goes around it. And um, position the clamp so this little tab goes inside the muffler. Same 
one thing. I need a five millimeter hex head. I will completely tighten it so it doesn't move out of the way. Hold on. Just loosen it back up a little bit more. And then push the muffler down a little bit. You know what? I might loosen this too. Because this bolt. Change it back to the six mil, and then tighten this exhaust bracket. Okay, now we tighten up the clamps at the front. Okay, so now I've already tightened the clamp bolts on both sides. Now we've got to install the O2 sensors. So before we do that, we twist it about 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six. I think that should be enough. Seven, let's say. Maybe a little bit. The reason why we twist it is so that when you install it, it's gonna go back to its original shape. So you eventually install that. Again. 
This is a bit of a try and error, but we'll get there. See how it's slowly untwisting? If you didn't twist it, this will be all twisted and then this will make this cable shorter. Okay, so tighten it, about finger tight, a quarter to Should be enough. And then place it back in. I'm happy with this. And we'll do the other side. So finally, this is the last bit. We we'll do the same thing. Twist it to the anti-clockwise about seven times. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, maybe six. It's not even long enough to reach seven times. As you're screwing it back on, the cable will twist and twist, making it straight again. There we have it. Now we put these clips back on. Put the cable back into the clips. This one has to go out because the cable has to be behind it. clips on just tighten it double check the tightness okay and there we have it it's now installed let's have a look it looks much cleaner and neater on both sides Okay, next I'm going to start her up and then we're going to compare before and after sound of the exhaust. Okay, I'm going to start up this bike and this will be a cold start. I haven't started this since I've installed it, so let's see how it goes.
Well, there we have it, folks. It sounds so much better. I actually don't mind this sound at all. There was a bit of a um, backfire, but that could be fixed by fuel mapping and EC flush tune. Okay, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if it helped you with your installation. So that way I will be motivated to do more videos. Thank you.